MPI brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Thank you, DigiKey. This week it is from Texas Instruments. Lady Ada, what is the new product of the week this week? Okay, this week's new product will get you on track. It is the BQ27427. Oh, that's a mouthful. It's a new <laughs> impedance track battery charge monitor uh, for lithium iron, lithium polymer batteries. Um, this one is kind of nice. It's uh, system side, so you can use it with any battery. It does not go into the battery pack. It goes into the thing that the battery plugs into. She makes it perfect for products where you you know, you know have these batteries that just plug in directly and you want to monitor their charge state. Um, now the nice thing about it, it has an integrated sense resistor. We'll chat about that. And it has the impedance track algorithm going on inside, uh, which does a really good job, a better job of keeping track of the battery charge state percentage, whether it needs to be charged, um how many you know how old it is how many times it has been charged back and forth because that does affect um how much current you can draw from it and it's i squared c so it's really easy to integrate and uh there's a separate data sheet with um all the registers information and you can also tweak the algorithm um by uh classifying the battery using the ti uh bq studio so let's get right into it lithium polymer battery uh, the lithium polymer battery is uh, very common for people designing portable battery-powered rechargeable products. You know it, you love it. Uh, some cool things about it, they're very high density, they're easy to get in almost any size, they're very inexpensive, um, they have a nice high uh, nominal voltage, 3.7 volts, which means you, know, you can often use a linear or buck converter to power your 3.3 volt electronics off of it. Um, put some protection circuitry in it and you know it's a pretty safe choice one thing that's a little annoying about them though is it can be hard to know what the battery life is and a lot of you know times when you're using a product um you need to know what percentage of the battery life is is it like two percent ten percent twenty five thirty ninety one hundred because that's going to tell you how long you can use it before you need to recharge and that can also change your use case like with my phone says there's 10 percent less i'm going to you know dim the backlight turn off the audio stop streaming youtube because i want to keep the uh, device going as long as possible so that information is very useful um the thing about uh lithium iron batteries is uh if you go back one uh so it's printed on on it the nominal voltage 3.7 volts and the nominal storage uh 1200 milliamp hours um but that nominal voltage 3.7 volts is just kind of like a rough number Depending on, in this case, your discharge rate, this is from a TI white paper, uh, which is going to be linked in the text, how much current you draw from it is going to affect what the voltage is because there's this built-in impedance inside the battery. So the higher the current, the, there's going to be a little bit of a voltage droop. So if you draw as low as a couple hundred milliamps, you know, you're going to start at about 4.1, 4.2 volts. And then you're going to sit kind of in that 3.7, 3.8 to 3.6 volt range for like 90% of the battery life. And then it gets near to the end and then it kind of plummets very quickly down to about 3.0 volts but if you're drawing three amps or one and a half amps you'll see that there's this de depression to the voltage which makes a purely voltage based monitor uh hard to use because if you don't know how much current is going through you don't know which curve you're on and so you know if you're reading 3.5 volts that could mean that if you're drawing a couple amps you're still at 90 percent but if you're drawing only 300 milliamps, it means you're at 5, 10%. So knowing how much current you're drawing is going to affect where, where which curve you're going to follow to determine um, the current battery life. Likewise, another thing people know about lithium iron and lithium polymer batteries is that they are uh, affected by temperature. Especially in cold weather, the voltage is going to droop as well. Um, at normal, you know, 20 degrees C, you'll see, you know, kind of the standard 4.0 to 3.0 voltage over the life cycle of the battery. But if you are at negative 10 C, because you're uh, in Fargo, then you're going to start at 3.4 volts before drooping down to uh, 3 volts very quickly. So you're, you know, what curve you're on, current, draw, temp ambient temperature range is going to affect it. Another reason why just measuring the open voltage of the battery or the, the loaded voltage of the battery is not going to necessarily tell you where you are um, in battery life. 
So, uh, also, thirdly, aging. Um, as batteries get older, the, the voltage drops or the impedance goes up. Um, that can affect, based on the current draw, how much voltage droop you're going to see there as well. So, you know, these three these three things uh, are important to track how many times you've charged it, what rate you're charging at or discharging at, and the ambient temperature. And that's where impedance track comes in. So impedance track is uh, the trademarked um, algorithm from TI that uses the current coulomb counting, which is basically counting the current going in and going out, um, as well as you know, calculating the impedance, looking at the voltage to figure out what is the uh, state of the battery, what percentage of capacity, as well as um, you know how long it's going to take to charge up, whether it's charging or it's discharging, everything you need to know about your battery so that you don't have to do the work, especially if you're using um, a device with you know, not a lot of microcontroller cycles to spare, you can outsource that all to this very low quiescent current chip. It'll keep track of all this for you and you don't have to try to, um, you know, measure the current going through a, a sensory system to determine how much current is leaving or entering your battery. There's a lot of details about impedance track. I'm not going to read this, but uh, you, know, you can pause the video and look at it. Um, but, the, you know, this is an algorithm that happens inside. You do want to have some details about the battery pack like you'll need to know of course what is the nominal peak voltage is it a 4.2 4.1 4.3 volt battery um that depends on the chemistry what the battery pack size is and also uh, it depends on you know the, the manufacturer the quality of the battery you might have lower or higher impedance um also the protection circuitry is going to affect that as well all this you can program into the impedance track calculator uh, by writing some couple registers um, and you'll get uh, more accurate results um, the benefits we chatted about, you know, basically does it all for you with the trade-off of that you have uh, a sensor resistor. And normally the sensor resistor is external. You'd have, you know, another component to add as well as, um, you know, any pull-ups or pull-downs, capacitors or so. And what's really nice is uh, how simple this uh, chip is to use. So it's, um, I didn't put the footprint here, but it is a 9-pin BGA. I think it's like 1.6 by 1.6 millimeters. It's quite small, but even though it's a BGA, the center pad is shared with an outer pad. They're both ground, which is kind of nice. It means that you don't have to use a plugged via or like weird routing to try to get that center pad out. Um, so you can kind of think of it as an eight pin BGA, not a nine pin, just you know, short the center pin out to the ground. You've got I squared C SCL SDA, so you use that to communicate with your Mac controller. Um, there is the integrated sensor resistor C on the right, and then the output VSYS, that is, you know, you, you plug in the battery to BAT, VDD and VSS, you see in the bottom there, that's just the internal LDO, so you have to put a capacitor there. You have the battery voltage coming in, goes to the sensor resistor, and then out to VSYS. So this goes in between the battery and your system voltage because it has that integrated sensor resistor on the high side. The coolant counter is uh, used to calculate the impedance track algorithm, and then there's two more output. Uh, I/O. There's the GP out. There's a general purpose output. You can use that as like an interrupt. It tells you when the battery voltage is low. It passes a threshold that you've programmed in. And there's also B in, which can be used um, as a thermistor input, or it can be used if you have an external uh, thermistor inside the battery pack for an internal battery pack monitoring. There's also um, the possibility of using it as a switch input, so you know when the battery has been cycled. That way, you can reset. Um, the algorithm because otherwise you know the coolant counter is going to go out of sync if somebody's replaced the battery on your device you want to kind of start over and say okay we have a new fresh battery we don't know how many times it's been cycled we don't know um, what charge state it's at so it kind of resets the internal algorithm um as you mentioned you you will have to uh, when you boot up this chip you want to tell it what it's connected to to the best of your ability so there's a couple things like the chemistry id um and the battery pack size and you program that over i squared c but you know and they give you a list of the commands um there's also the ability to create a golden image which is if you have you know a battery from your lot of batteries especially this is if it's not being removed and replaced with some you know off you know an off-the-shelf battery if it's like something you know well-known battery 
you can do a learning cycle where you have a dev board from TI, you plug your battery in, and it kind of does this charge, discharge, relax cycle, and it calculates um, some, of, some of the details about the battery and how it responds to charging and discharging that you can then enter into your uh, uh, I squared C programming, and this is Gauge Studio. So you know you use their valve kit, uh, but you plug in the battery, and it runs it for you. You know if you're if you're doing a large run of a product and you want to get like really good, accurate, precise um, battery statistics data, I recommend it. If not, you can probably get away with just putting in the voltage and the current. Um, this is an example of how you use the I squared C commands to program in the chip. Note that uh, it does not have EEPROM. You know, it's, it's a low cost um, chip here. So it's all in RAM. So when you turn on their microcontroller, you're gonna have to program it every time. So yeah, that's a trade off of this very low cost chip. It's like 70 cents in quantity. You do have to program it each time, but it's not a big deal. Um, you have like this key you have to insert and you put in the capacity and the voltage and all that. Do it every time and, and you're good to go. It's not in stock, but it will be in stock soon. It was in stock when I first picked this, uh, but it's, it looks like it's going to be in stock in a couple months. Um, they sold out pretty quickly. It's um, it's a nice little chip. I mean, it's very small. Uh, it uh, has the integrated sense resistor, so it's like one less thing you need. You only need two passes. Connected over I squared C, and uh, for under like 70 cents, you can have a really high quality battery monitor for your product. Probably runs off of a battery. You want to know exactly what the state of charge is. And that's me. That is this week's INMPI. I on MPI.